Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I would like to welcome you to episode 183 of this Let's Play Prophecy of Pendor. Now, this is going to take a slightly different format than is usual, in that this is going to be something of a recap on what's happened. This is the penultimate episode of this series. I want to end with a bit of a bang on the finale, but I thought it would be kind of cool to revisit the entire life of Klauswitz in this game so don't worry i'm not going to have all 90 hours of footage that we have actually recorded over the past couple of months but rather kind of a, a highlights reel now i don't actually have much of this footage on my hard disk anymore unfortunately so i am basically copying it straight off of youtube again and then publishing it here i do own all of this content so copyright should be totally fine uh, there should, of course, go with a bit of a spoiler warning here. If you haven't seen the entire series and you're a little bit worried about catching up and the like, then you probably should pause right now and then watch this a bit later. But if you have been following the series from the beginning, thank you very much, first of all, for your support. It is really, really appreciated. Without you guys constantly commenting, liking, and of course just watching these videos, I would never have got as far as I have. And Prophecy of Pandora is by far and away the most popular series that I have done on my channel to date. So really, guys, you are completely making this for me, so thank you ever so much. Now, you will notice that the uh, quality here is not quite as good. I am basically just recording this in a little window from YouTube, so we're not going to be getting the full quality HD footage, unfortunately, and for that I do apologize. Uh, maybe for some of the later videos, I might still have the raw data on my hard disk, though it is kind of unlikely. I think I've only got about five episodes worth or something like that. Anyway, um, I will just be kind of popping along from clip to clip. I'll be using, for the most part, the actual in-game audio rather than this voiceover that I've been doing up until now. And yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this little recap that we're doing. Now, in a relevation that may surprise some of you, my name will be Klauswitz. And let's see, the skills that I will use. So, Mettenheim style requires that I play only on foot. I'm going to be using primarily two-handed weapons, though I am permitted to use pole arms, one-handed weapons, throwing weapons, and crossbows. I may not use bows. The biggest thing is I'm not allowed to ride. None of my army are allowed to ride. I can hire cavalry troops, but at the beginning of every battle they must dismount. This is Mettenheim style. It is all about playing the infantry game. Some of the setups for some of these battles will be a bit slower as a result, so I may speed those up, but when we actually get to the clash of things I'll return to normal speed and we'll fight normally. Okay, in my party I must have Frederick although I can pick any of the others. So it's very likely I'll have the uh, Frederick Donovan combo. Because I'm Mettenheim, I will not recruit any Barclay troops unless I have Donovan in, in the party with me. So the only time I will use Barclay, because Mettenheim and Barclay are basically at war at this point in, in the game. And I must try and acquire as many Mettenheim troops as I can. Great. Sarah, I think you might be cheaper. Sarah usually acts as my uh, agility character, so she'll have high looting. So come on, Sarah, get off the sodding horse. Oh, wrong button, that's why. Get off, there you go. Up and down. So we'll start moving from side to side a bit, avoid their arrows. Unfortunately, the AI is pretty bad for making up any. Um, movement to the side they always miss, seemingly. Let's see how this weapon works. It's not so it's quick. And there we go. Victory in our very first fight. Episode 1, we were playing with the release version, so 3.7. However, there has been an update now to 7.02. Unfortunately that is not save game compatible, so we've lost around five days of gameplay. I did start a new game, but... Duke Brennus versus a Ravenstern army. Let's jump in on Brennus' side, because Brennus is an absolute gangster when it comes to fighting. Because he has a whole load of Knights of the Lion. Looks like Ravenstern has Ice Guard Rangers, who are a new unit, but they are losing pretty heavily. Uh, Brennus. 
So this is our first faction fight. I'm pretty sure if we're going to be joining the Fear Twain that we'll be at war with Ravenstone anyway, so helping Sarleone is not going to cost us anything. That's a lot of Knights of the Lion. Awesome. The main danger of the Heretics is they just have those one or two units which are really heavily armoured in each of those patrols. It's been a bit of a fight. Hello, I'd like to welcome you to episode 3 of Let's Play Prophecy of Pendor. As you can see, we have once again had to start again, although we are importing Glauswitz at level 3 now. I we'll actually need to do some uh, level upgrade. That is a big sword. I feel a lot more like a man of Metenheim now. Now I just need the plate armour. Uh, as you can see, I've just been adjusting my sound volume, so hopefully the sound quality will be a bit better this time. Uh, another thing which I noticed is my sound input was actually coming through my web webcam rather than the headset which I'm currently wearing. That's been changed, so hopefully the sound quality will also improve and you'll get less of the clickety clatter of using my keyboard and mouse. Let's hope anyway. Highlanders. These guys hit hard. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Ooh, we're about to be attacked. Whenever there's a pause like that, it's because we're being attacked. What are you? Yes! Didn't think I'd win that, because usually they kill you with the bloody knives. Do you want... some mercenaries? Yes, finally. Yes, I absolutely will join the Kingdom of Sarlion. So. We're at war with Bacchus, so we can go and attack them. We'll probably need to do some caravan raiding. It's a fairly good way of raising cash. And that. Approach siege. Join the next assault. Here we go. 800 men. We'll see how this runs. Once I've hidden in this siege tower. Oh, we have a very nice little ridge there. We'll get our archers stand a little bit closer. Just a little. Ah! Jeez, I'm doing rubbish. Come on. Oh, man, we're getting butchered. Yikes. Maybe this was not quite such a good idea. Ow. Wipes. These guys are hard. Jeez. I keep thinking that javelin sticking out my back is my sword. How tough are these guys? Ow, bollocks. Alright, we're running, but we've probably just been captured. Yes. Oh, I was going so well. <laughs> Well, so are the fortunes of war, but lesson learned. The centurions, damn. I think they do level at least. You have made power sort of. Didn't even see them. Oh, okay.
Get off your horse. Yes. Have at it. Come on. After that terrible defeat just now. That was amazing. That is what Pendor is all about. Wow, that was cool. Interesting rumor about Eventide. So the Empire Legionnaire told him demon warriors are child's play to fight compared to Eventide. I wonder if there's a link between them, though. Ooh. So here we go, Shadow Legion. So this also tells you about the uh, relation between the orders, which I think was one of the most important things to uh, introduce to the uh, the law of the. Let me do. There you go. Bard. Okay. Um, yeah, about the law between the relations between different orders, because that's really what fleshes them out. It's it's not what they do right. It's what they do wrong. It's it's the drama. It's it's why they're at odds with other factions that really makes them interesting. I think. Yes. Freddy! Do I have money? No! Bugger! Pretty sure I can't afford him, but we'll have a word with old Fred Meister. He's still got his big moustache. Yes! Someone on the forums was saying that some of the uh, faces have changed and he might have lost it. That would have been cause for, for full on Fred. I came up with that name. For very serious um, problems. Yeah, an example of their using Dutch and German. Mine is spelt the Dutch way there. I was actually thinking about that last night. Um, how Mettenheim language would sound if, like, we created a language. I'm not a linguist. Like Tolkien, really brought a lot of life to uh, Lord of the Rings because he was a linguist. He created language for the elves and some of the other races. That's not a skill I have. I just kind of create stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just one kind of fascinating thing. How would you merge Dutch and German together? Oh, you are an adventurer. Which yes, would you be? What can I do Grand. But I need six for Fred. I'll take you because I need more firepower. But now we know where he is. He's there. Okay, please still be here, Fred. Yes. Freddy! Yay, Freddy! I totally should strip him of his armour, but I'm not going to. I mean, he, he has of Mettenheim in his name. I don't. Ready! So I was looking over the um, developer forums, like trying to think of some more things I could say from, you know, inside information. <laughs> oh, more deserters. We'll go after them. There's more of them. And one of the things which I remembered was one of the very, very first things I did as a developer. That was working on the Order of Dawn and Eventide. And what many of you will not know is there's actually a third order, the Order of Twilight. So what is Twilight all about? Well, basically, the background of Dawn and... Sorry, I need to think for a second here. Dawn and Eventide. Is, Dawn is the original, and then Eventide split off from them. And part of that is the ambiguity of whether Eventide are heretics or not. And generally it's considered canon that some of them are, some of them aren't. There are loyal ones and there are evil ones. So Eventide, sorry, um, Twilight has basically gone, okay, this is a problem. We need to kind of rebrand ourselves. So some of the definitely um, pure Eventide, still believing that Dawn are a bunch of heretical maniacs, um, sorry, fanatical maniacs, not heretical, um, have split off. They still believe in kind of more open thought and knowledge and exploration, experimentation and the like, but without the heretical elements. Now we thought that this was kind of digging into the interesting aspects of the Eventide, because he never really knew who were the good guys and who were the bad guys, so we left them out. But they were a thing for a while. Here they come. We'll let people shoot because we will get a few volleys off. And throwing weapons is still useful. Plus, once this initial charge is hit, they'll probably break away. At least their horse archers will. Their lancers won't. And here we go. Now the butchering can commence. See, they get completely just stopped. So you can just sweep in and just clean up. Their spears are terrible in close combat fighting. 
and they don't have much athletics or infantry skills. Obviously, they're mounted troops. Now we just clear up. Eight kills, not bad. And we still obviously have a lot of men standing. We lost three. That is totally okay. you versus me now. So I'm going to try and block you. Well, you're a bit quick. And we won! And that is how you do in a... Hello, my name is Mordred, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 28 of this Let's Play Prophecy of Pendor 3.7062. Yes, that's right, we have upgraded to the new patch. We have started a new game, although you may not recognise it as such. So yes, these Mettenheim Aventoyers, we did not see them at all during the last play. I don't know why. I think they were working, because other people were saying that they had them. But we never saw any, and I wanted to get them, because they lend themselves rather well to our playthrough. And just before um, 3.7 actually came out, the original version, uh, my only request to the team was that they add these guys, so that it was possible to get Mettenheim troops regular infantry and crossbows. Now the previous patch, or yeah, the previous version, this wasn't working. This was supposed to work. It does now. So we now have a way of getting Mettenheim soldiers, which is brilliant. Victus, dude. Hello. Yay! That is precisely the one I wanted. Marvellous. Okay, so we are now with the Fieldsvein, and we are at war with the Shah. Oh, Valdis and Stonehand. This is a fight we definitely want to join, because we want the king to like us more, and we obviously want Stonehand to like us more, because he's a duke. Well, we did basically nothing in that fight, but that's okay. That, that was the first big fight we've been in. We will have got a couple of relations with these guys. We added numbers, if nothing else. That is Wolfbode. Who's that? Chatting. Oh, I just got Uluveta. <laughs> okay, I wonder if DF can actually use it yet. Don't chase me, Wolfbode. Go away, Wolf Bode. Go away. Uh, right. No! Why'd you go that way? You idiot! Ah! Really? 42 soldiers. Oh, for fuck's sake. I clicked the opposite direction. 
Excuse my swearing there, but that, this is really frustrating. Yeah, now you go this way. Yeah, piss off. Ah! You, you can even see my trail going this way, this way, and then boom, into Wolfbode. And then we will walk around the streets and see if I can remember where on earth this chest is. It has been a while. So I'm going to do what I promised to do in the last episode. Oh, I actually got relations with you. Good. That one. Marvellous. I am now a lord of the Fjords Vein. Wait, I got... <laughs> okay, so what I just said was completely untrue. Although I'm sure it is still true. Maybe Gimeas also didn't have a... A lord. Yeah, because no relations dropped with anyone, so they didn't lose their lands in my favour. So I guess because it was taken from the Dashar, oh, and it's looted, and it's right now. Oh. Man, that's completely <laughs> thrown me. Oh well. Yes. <laughs> okay. 1,000 against 760. This is going to be a big fight. In our hairy breaks, between us, I think we could do this. Oh, what a hit! <laughs> Jump over a horse and hit him on the way down. <laughs> now you're just showing off, Klaus. Come on. <laughs>
No real reason to. Aha! Yes! Anson Lodge is mine. Join the feast. Just have a word with everyone here. And then we'll go off and... Well, actually, we'll check our village and then we will check our new castle. Wait, what was that? You want to introduce me to Godwin? Huh. Is it Godwin that I usually marry? I think it is. Or is it Doomseeker who's usually my father-in-law then? I always thought it was Stonehand. Um... Alright. Forkbeard, sup? Oh, we didn't have any relation. I'm surprised by that. Sup? Aw, bitch. <laughs> Home sweet home. Nothing in the garrison, so we're going to have to put some troops in the garrison. I'll deal with that in a moment. We need to go and train the Seneschal. Actually, I will put a garrison here. Uh, no, I'll keep them for the moment, because I'm here. And if they had... If... Who's going to attack us? We're not at war. Duh. I'd rather have people in my army right now, so I can actually train them up. And then I'll dump off a bunch of people and start recruiting an actual garrison. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, training session. Let's see what's actually here. Winery, a blacksmith, sanitation standards, tax office, messenger post, prison tower. You can also build a shrine here. No, we need to train him. It's going to cost eight, take 18 hours and 2,700. Do it. Yeah, I'm glad we have this. And then we can establish the Griffins, and we'll join the Griffins, and maybe undertake some of their quests too. I think I'll worry about the garrison first though. Ooh, Silo Zass has appeared too. Oh, he joined Hulric. He's not attacking. Now we can build a whole bunch more stuff. I think I want to do the Craftsman. Although these places can't get raided, can they? So there's no real reason to have it. I guess the Shrine and the Church would be the most useful. And we'll do the shrine first because it's cheaper. 19, 16, 4033. Yeah, we'll do the shrine first. Then we'll go to the. Oh, we should have repaired the uh, fire thing. Right. War room. Knighthood. Griffins. Wow, the adventure companies really didn't like that. Neither did the heretics. And the Griffins obviously absolutely love me. Okay, I don't have any troops. Um, conduct troops? No. 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 Great Hall. Don't want to do a feast. Let's see. Dangerous generalship. Lord, lead a force of chosen knights of the Griffin. This is a lot of fun, actually. I really, really like this. So, current troops will be waiting for when I return safely, but companions will remain with me at all times. I've already put my troops in the garrison, so hopefully I can do that. Now, who am I fighting? Am I literally just fighting anyone? Is that all I'm doing? Winning renown. Um, wrong buttons. Okay. I need to get 195 renown for the glory of the order. Okay, cool. 20 days to do it. This is actually fairly challenging, but we're at war, which means I can use this army against Sarleone, which is actually kind of nice. So I have got 32 Knights of the Griffin and 53 Griffin Retainers. This is definitely one of my favourite quests. This is so much fun. There's one. We can go and fight them. You at War of Ravenstone? No. 98 people. Baron Lofwein. He's not got any specials as far as I can tell he's not that big an army to be honest so let's go and crush him for the greater glory of the Knights of the Griffin okay so we are still doing this Mettenheim style so that means that you lot all have to dismount and actually I could assign you to infantry you're Knights of the Griffin I'll be the only one using you um, but we'll just have a really big group 
like there. And we have like three archers, maybe. <laughs> Follow me, actually. Knights of the Griffin just look so cool. I really like them. I think it's like the uh, black tabard with the armor. Five kills, not bad at all. Then one lone horseman. Good victory. Join. He didn't join. Ah. Ah. Nine soldiers. No, I can't afford that. I'm going to lose this fight. All right. Close. How many of us are left? Seven against... 111. Cripes. Yeah, there's not a chance. <laughs> not with that many arrows coming in. No, I'm gonna get captured. Ah! And that's gonna mean I'm gonna fail this quest, probably, and I have to get all the sodding companions back again. At least we're near Pointbrook, which we're not at war with. Oh well, we'll continue this with just companions then. We lost 20 grand. Painful. But no items. Oh, we did lose items. No important items though. 